Hello everyone, welcome back to the discussion on KTUS for mathematics examination. Today we will see uh, the module 2 that is continuous probability distributions. The same part B questions. Each carries 7 marks. 13a, the IQ of an individual randomly select from, selected from a population is a normal distribution with mean and standard deviation given. Find the probability that an individual has IQ above 140 and between 120 and 130. So before that, this question is about normal distribution, right? So I will tell you how to take the values of normal distribution uh, from the chart you are provided. You know about the chart which is always in need to find the normal distribution values, okay? I will explain you how it is done. See for normal distribution, the random variable will be x, okay? But to take the values from your chart, you have to convert this x variable to z variable, which is we have to convert the distribution to standard normal distribution. Okay, Use, using the formula x minus mu by sigma is equal to z. Okay, uh, for that you need, you must have your mu value that is mean value, mu is mean and uh, sigma is standard deviation as we have discussed in discrete probability. So, you will be given with x value in the question. And once you have converted that x to z, you can then make use of the chart. This is the chart. You can see a graph at the top of this chart. And this chart corresponds to the value that we get from this graph. Okay, this is the standard normal distribution graph. And you can see it is a symmetrical one. Send it. And the x-axis is z value and the y-axis is the area corresponding to that number. That is, see z ranges from the negative end to positive end. So z value starts from the negative end and one more page is there. This is the positive values of z. Fine. And here you can see in the first column there is only one decimal place given. And the second decimal place is taken from the row above that is negative 2.57 how to take this value you can choose negative 2.5 here and take the second decimal place 0 0.07 from here okay then the intersecting element is 0 0.0051 so what is the relation between this negative 2.57 and 0 0.0051 p of set lesser than 2 minus 2.57 is 0 0.0051 okay now i am going to take another number negative 1.09 that is negative 1.0 is here and 0 0.09 is at the top so the intersecting element 0 0.1379 0 0.1379 and the number negative 1.09 what is the relation between this number P of Z lesser than negative 1.09 is 0.1379. So, always remember that Z lesser than the particular number of Z is equal to the value taken from the chart. Okay. And what does this means is in the graph, you will have a point negative 1.09, isn't it? To the left of 0, you will have a point negative 1.09. And 0.1379 is the area from the leftmost end till that z value. So, this area is your 0.1379. Okay. Another example. Same way. Here see. Negative 2.57. This is a z value, isn't it? Set lesser than negative 2.57. So, to the left of 0, since it is a negative value, you will have negative 2.57. The area from the leftmost end till negative 2.57, this shaded region has the area 0 0.0051. Okay. Similarly, let us see to the positive end. That is, I am taking a number 1.47. Okay. So, 1.4 is here and 0 0.07 is here. The intersecting element is 0 0.9292. 0 0.9292. So, what is the relation between 1.47 and 0.9292? Probability of Z lesser than 1.47 is 0 0.9292. And from the graph, how you can make out this? The Z value 
1.47. So, this is a positive number. So, mark to the right of origin 1.47. And the area from the extreme left end till 1.47, that area corresponds to 0.9292. Okay. Why we take the area from the left end is, it is given that set lesser than 1.47. So, set value lesser than 1.47 means to the left of 1.47. Now, how to take P of set greater than 1.47? That indicates to the right of 1.47. Greater than 1.47 is this area. That is to the right of 1.47. How to get the area under this? That is how to get this area. We know that the total probability is 1. Total area is equal to 1. And in order to get this yellow shaded, we have to subtract 0.9292 from total area. Isn't it? Total area is 1. So, when we subtract the pink color shaded area, we will get the rest of the area, which is uh, P of set greater than 1.47. Okay. Similarly, if you need to get P of set greater than negative 2.57. Greater means to the right of negative 2.57. Here is negative 2.57. So, to the right means you have to get this shaded area. So, how to get this yellow shaded area? It is the total area 1 minus the pink shaded area which is 0 0.0051. Fine, this is how you make use of the chart. And there are actually two charts available. What I have discussed now is uh, the chart shaded from the leftmost end. You can see a graph above this chart and here this shading starts from the leftmost end. Okay, so whatever I have explained now corresponds to this type of graph where the shading begins from the extreme left end. There is also another chart with a graph shaded from the middle of the graph. Okay, for that the complete explanation is going to be reverted so, uh, for time being, in order to reduce confusion, I am not explaining that particular chart with the shading from the center. So, whatever I have explained is for the chart with the graph shader from the extreme left end. Make a note on that and check out what kind of graph is given in your chart. Okay. Now, let us start doing probability above 140. Here it is given normal distribution. So, 140 is the x value. You have to convert it to z. Okay. Uh, the mu and sigma is given 115. So, p of x greater than 140. It is given above 140. So, x greater than 140. Apply x minus mu by sigma on both sides of the inequality. So, in the left it is directly written as z. And here numericals are done to 2.667. Again, set is greater than 2.667. So, in the graph, uh, mark the point 2.667 and above means it is the right area we need. So, whatever you get from the chart is P of set lesser than 2.667. But here you need P of set greater than 2.667. So, it is total area minus the value got from the chart and it is 0.9961. Um, let us see to the graph. See 2.667 means it is 2.6 here and 0 0.06 here. The intersecting number is 0 0.9961. Okay. The substitute here and get your value. Next is P of 120 between 120 and 130. So, apply x minus mu by sigma in all the three sections and get the values. And it is now uh, between 1.33 and 2. Okay. So, mark the points 1.33 and 2. So, we need the area shaded. So, how to get this is just take P of set lesser than 2. Then you will get the whole area from the left end till 2. Okay. And you take P of set lesser than 1.33. Then you will get the area from the left end till 1.33. Once you subtract the smaller area from the bigger area, you will be left with the yellow shaded region which is in our need. Okay. So, that comes to be about 0 0.069. Just uh, get the values from the chart provided. And the next question is 
continuous random variable x is uniformly distributed with mean and variance. Uh, see, uniform distribution problem is very easy. Never skip uniform distribution problem because the chart is, you can see here, the chart is this one, uniformly distributed. So, a simple single line is there, okay, uniform distribution from A to B and the value is 1 by B minus C. E. So, here in the question, it is uh, given, mean and variance is given as mu is equal to 1 and sigma square. The variance is 4 by 3. Just note down the details of uniform distribution. Here, mu value and sigma value. Sigma, I mean, uh, variance value is uh, there, formula. So, substitute the formula here and solve for A and B to negative 1 and 3. Now, again, you go draw the graph. Okay, A is negative 1. And remember here always B is to the right of A. Okay, B is greater than A always. So, the first uh, value you should mark is the A value, negative 1 and next is 3. Okay, so definitely 1 by B minus A means 1 by 3 minus minus 1, that is 1 by 4. Your value of this, the height of this graph is 1 by 4. Fine, now the question is P of X lesser than 0 x lesser than 0 means this is the axis for x, right? So, x lesser than 0 means this area. That is from negative 1 to 0, we have to get the probability. So, here, see, we are dealing with continuous distribution. So, we need integration. For the discrete, we made use of sigma sign. So, here we go with integrations. So, negative 1 to 0. And the function f of x, what is the value? It is a straight line. So, it is a constant value 1 by 4. Uh, integrate it 1 by 4. Uh, it is a constant. You know this how to do and you will arrive at 1 by 4. Okay. So, uniform distribution is very easy. Uh, never miss it out. And the 14th question, 14a. It is the joint density function. Remember joint distribution in discrete. The question is, you are given with a f of x comma y for x greater than 0 and y greater than 0. Two random variables are there. So, first of all, here also you need to draw graph, okay, for the two random variables and it is given x both greater than 0. So, it is the positive, I mean the first quadrant that is taken, x greater than 0 means this portion and y greater than 0. So, it is the first quadrant and Find P of X plus Y lesser than or equal to 1 and we have to check whether it is independent or not. Okay. So, first thing is the given domain of X and Y are noted down. Now, you have to find in this area the joint probability lesser than or equal to 1. Okay. X plus Y lesser than or equal to 1. Now, how to draw this inequality? First, you just omit this inequality sign and replace it with equal to. Then you get a line equation and you know how to draw a line that is put x equal to 0, you get the y value. So, here when x is 0, y equal to 1. So, the point is 0 comma 1, x comma y, isn't it? The point uh, x comma y is 0 comma 1 and next you put y equal to 0, so x value is 1. So, the other point is uh, 1 comma 0, you have to write the x coordinate first, okay. Now, two points are got, so two points are marked now. 1 comma 0 and 0 comma 1 join the line. So, this line, this blue color line is x plus y equal to 1. Now, what we have to shade is x plus y lesser than or equal to 1. We have now just this blue colored line, isn't it? Now, how to shade x plus y lesser than or equal to 1? For that, put x equal to 0 and y equal to 0. That is the point origin. 0 comma 0 is the point origin, isn't it? And check if the equation is satisfied. If you put 0 and 0 for x and y, it is 0 plus 0, which is 0, lesser than or equal to 1. Yes, the equation satisfied. So, shade the area including the origin. Okay, if satisfied, shade the region including the origin. Fine. If the equation is not satisfied, then you have to shade above the line. Because origin is here, so exclude origin and shade it. But here, since the equation is satisfied, when we substitute the coordinates of origin, the equation got satisfied. So, what we do? We will shade the area including the origin point. But for this question, the shading is constrained to 
positive quadrant only because we need the positive quadrant. I mean the first quadrant only, isn't it? So just shade the area including the origin but only the first quadrant. Now next thing is we have to get the probability. Probability means we have to get the area, isn't it? For area, we have to go for double integration. So double integration, the function dx dy. Okay, the function is taken now, e raised to negative x minus y dx dy. Now, how to uh, get the limits? Now, one more thing, for outer limits, outer limits, you will have the constants written. And for inner limits, you will have either constants or functions. Okay, so uh, you have to start with outer limits always. Okay, always start with outer limits. So, limit of y is just check out the range of the green color shaded region. The complete shading starts from y equal to 0. From this end, this end to this end. This is the extreme ends of y axis, isn't it? So, it is 0 to 1, which is why I have written 0 to 1 here. Okay. Now, going for limits of x. For that, for the inner limits, you always need to if it is x limits, you need to get draw a horizontal strip. Okay. And what is the x value in the extreme left boundary of the strip? That is, this is the extreme left boundary. Here, it touches the y axis. So, x equal to 0 in y axis. And the extreme right boundary for the strip, here it is a line. And in this line, it is x plus y equal to 1. So, from this, you have to get the value of x. x is equal to 1 minus 1. So, left becomes the lower limit 0 and right becomes the upper limit 1 minus 1. Okay, then you go with the integration steps and get the values. Next question, are x and y independent? Justify. Just like in discrete probability distribution, px of x into py of y is equal to f of x comma y. This is the thing you need to satisfy if, if x and y are independent. Okay, so let's see px of x. So, again, this is a probability, right? So, we need to integrate this. The same function is taken, but we are integrating over the y region. Okay, we are integrating over the y region for the subscript x. And what is the range of y? To know the range of y, you have to check for the equation. I mean the question. In the question, it is given y is greater than 0. So, the range of y starts from 0 to infinity and range of x starts from 0 to infinity. So, for px of x, uh, y's range is 0 to infinity and go doing this and also for p of y, here we need to get the range of x. Here also it is 0 to infinity and do the calculations. When multiplied, you get e raised to negative x into e raised to negative y. So, since the base is same, the powers are added up, you will arrive at the same function itself. So, since this is satisfied, we can say x and y are independent. Fine. And the last question, Life, lifetime of a certain type of electric bulb may be considered as an exponential random variable with mean 50 hours. Next distribution is exponential random variable. So, the distribution, the function is f of x equal to lambda e raised to minus lambda x and these are the points to be noted that is mean, variance and standard deviation. Okay, so here in the question it is given mean value is 50 hours. So, substitute mu is equal to 50 and from this you can easily get the value for lambda and sigma. And the question continues, using central limit theorem find the approximate probability that 100 of these electric bulbs will provide a total of more than 6000 hours of burning time. So, total is 6000 hours and you can see the variable, random variable is the time of burning. So, x value is the time of burning, the burning time. So, 6000 is the total random variable, the summation of the random variable. So, it is the SN, the summation is 6000 hours and number of bulbs, how many bulbs are there? 100 of this electric bulbs, so N value is 100 bulbs. So, according to the central limit theorem, you have to by heart all these three formulae where X bar is the average, which is SN, the total divided by number. 
and from that you have to get the value of Z in order to make use of that normal distribution charge. So Zn is Sn minus N mu by sigma root and this is the formula to convert the details into Z value. There is also another formula for Z that X bar minus mu by sigma by root. For this problem let make use of this formula because we are provided with Sn, N, mu and sigma. Okay, And the probability to find out is probability that these bulbs provide a total of more than 6000 hours. So x bar is equal to Sn by N that is 6000 divided by 100 which is 60. So probability of an average more than 60. Average is more than 60. Now using this equation convert this x bar to z. Okay. So in both sides of the inequality you do x bar minus mu by sigma by root 10. Here also 60 minus mu value is 50 divided by sigma by root 10. That is 50 by root 100. Okay. Left side becomes z directly and right side it is 2. So p of z greater than 2. Now that the variable is in z, go to the graph. Take the point 2 and we need the z value greater than 2. So the right of the shaded area. So whatever you get from the graph is set lesser than 2. You get the area till 2. In order to get the right area, right side area, 1 minus the area got from the graph. That is 0.9772. Finally, the answer is 0.228. So these were the model questions from this chapter. Main thing is you have to study how to take the values from the chart. That is the normal distribution. Uh, you must uh, study and never skip the uniform distribution problems. It is very easy. And another thing is um, CLT problems is also very easy. So do well in your exams. Till we meet in the next class. This is Minu signing off. Thank you and take care.